All right. What's up, everybody? How we hey. doing? Oh, yeah. Fucking 111 people. Damn. That's pretty good. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on this uh, lovely Sunday. Hopefully it's lovely where you are. Yeah. It's not um, in every city right now. <laughs> it's no, it's crazy times right now. So hopefully we could take some of that away and talk about rollerblading, something that oh, we yeah. all love and care about. And we have, again, a very, very special guest. It's going to be a good one today. By way of the internet, by the power of the internet, we're able to now access these <laughs> these guests, and it's really cool. So, um, yeah, we're gonna have Aaron Feinberg on today. But you know, before we do anything, we got to do our little spiel. Um, I got to do my spiel. We got to talk about our Patreon supporters, which we've had like a very overwhelming amount of support in the midst of uh, this lockdown and everything mm -hmm. like that. So we just want to say thank you. But before we do so, follow us on all of our platforms as always. You know, Facebook. Give us a like if you don't already. Give us a like on. Um, you know, subscribe to our page on YouTube, hit the notification bell. So when we get these shows coming up, you get the ding. Um, I just got mine, by the way. Go to, yeah, I got mine as well. Go to <laughs> iTunes, give us a five-star uh, uh, rating, you know, give us a review, share the video, comment on it. If you feel inclined to do so, uh, we have a Patreon and um, we're going to start offering some cool new things coming up for our Patreon supporters. So the more you uh, support our show, the more we will figure out how to get back to you on that. And also, if you feel inclined uh, on these lives, you know, we have a super chat. If you want to kick us 99 cents, like shout out Chad Hornish. <laughs> Did he but do yeah, that? so all the support, we really appreciate it. And um, please be sure to just follow and share our things because we're just trying to, you know, keep doing these cool shows and have cool guests like we have today. Yeah, we're also um, on our Instagram. We're almost at 10,000. So if you don't follow us, uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram so we can get to that 10,000 mark and we can finally have the swipe up so everybody could just swipe up to our live streams every time, make it nice and easy for all you guys. So if you don't follow us already, like Billy said, follow us on Instagram. Um, we also have some more Patreon people to shout out. A uh, big shout out to Tyler DeRafo, Freddie Soto, Abri Berlin, Ellie Sweet, or Ellie Sweat, actually, uh, Gilbert Chavez, Loso Wavy, and Rory Bland. Thank you guys all so much for your support. Um, like Billy out. said also, yeah, like Billy said also, we're working on after all this shit going on, we're like kind of rebranding how we work and stuff like that. So in the next week or two, we're gonna have a lot more stuff open to our Patreon supporters for everybody to, you know, enjoy it with us. So be a part of the community if you can. Um, before we get going with Aaron real quick, we have to do the monthly supporter giveaway for April. So every month from our Patreon page, we pick one person to pretty much win anything they want in our online store. So we're going to do that now. Just pick the supporter for the month of April. So we're just catching up on everything now. Um, let me get the thing here. All right, there we go. So here are all the names for the Patreon supporters for April. And we're going to let it rip right now real quick. See who the winner is. I like we can just put it on the screen now for everyone. It's so easy. Oh, Ricardo Lino. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. Well, big shout out to Ricardo Lino. I support his... Uh, Patreon page too for his YouTube channel. Absolutely. So, yeah. Ricardo, thanks for your support. We're going to reach out to you so you can get some Jump Street gear. And uh, everyone else, thank you again so much. Uh, should we set it off? Yeah, I'm really stoked. I'm stoked Hell to yeah. talk to Aaron. Hope everyone else is excited as we are. So let's yeah. get Aaron in here. There we go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I was about to look up the jump street podcast on my phone so i could see what the hell you guys are doing you left me in the dark <laughs> did you get to watch it or no no i didn't even make it that far you didn't get there <laughs> i was gonna say you could probably check on the comments see what people are saying about you i don't even see a comment thing uh well we'll figure uh, out without well, it okay so whatever. yeah all good how you doing aaron good how are you uh everything's great it's good to hear that some people are doing good in the world now yeah not bad Hanging in yeah, there. Um, everything slowed down a bit with this quarantine shit, but in a way, it's been kind of nice to take a step back and chill. Yeah, so, definitely. I don't want to get too comfortable though. Like, no, no, like, I'm, I'm over it, comfortable. obviously. But yeah. just in, just in a sense, uh, with the traffic slowing down and just everything kind of taking a step back and, um, yeah, just this whole pace, you know. Have you been working through this time? Yeah, I've been working the whole time, so not much has changed for me, really. Dang, no, I haven't, no I haven't played pool in a couple of months, and it's really pissing me off, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, things like that get to be a bit of a bummer. There's a lot more people working than I thought, too, and, like, 
I thought that no one was working. And then during these Zoom chats, where we're just everyone just getting together in these virtual chat rooms and stuff. Everyone's working. I'm like, I'm like, like I'm the only one not working. And I'm like, yeah. I kind of wish I was working. I'd rather be making money, but most people got laid little. off and uh, they're making more money than I am. But whatever. exactly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not totally like all my friends are like, yo, man, I'm making so much money and I'm not even working right now. And I'm just like going to work and they're making more than me. So whatever. That's the beauty of our system though. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so as many people who are watching know, wow, we have over 200 people watching right now and a couple people hit us up on the super chat. Thank you very much. It's good for a Sunday. But um, so Aaron, you have this like super long, illustrious skate career that started way back in the day i remember seeing like the videos of you back in the day with like skating with the little your helmet your pads were bigger than you and like, you were still ripping around I, I, I some like hoax early hoax i don't even remember the videos but um, yeah. I, i'm trying to think back that far i was really a little guy <laughs> yeah like how did you get into the game like did, were you skateboarding first or like how did you come in um i think just I mean, skateboarding, I wasn't really doing shit with, just messing around, like, but same thing when rollerblading, when I was introduced to it, but uh, my little brother was more into skateboarding at the time, I remember, and uh, skateboarding's always been been fun for me and something on the side to mess around with, and nowadays, I definitely skateboard more than I rollerblade, just because it's a lot better on the body. Oh, shit. You could like do more like low impact stuff, right? Yeah, totally. I have trouble keeping doing the mushroom blading. I I I got a little adrenaline going and I try to throw shit, you know. Yeah. But on skateboarding, I could keep that under control. Yeah. It's cool that you tried the mushroom blading in the first place. That's the total opposite (laughs) of like your skating how it was when you were like in your prime and stuff. Yeah, I mean as creative as you can get on the technical level with skating is uh what am i trying to say you know it's a lot easier to do a skateboard sitting there trying to land a trick on the floor but on rollerblades it's pretty i'm losing myself (laughs) maybe you know what i'm trying to say i don't (laughs) No, (laughs) but it's also like you come from a place that it's it's kind of weird rollerblading because that's like you know the burnside like the hesher skateboard culture and there's there's always that famous photo of you like dropping in there and i heard stories like people were like throwing bottles at you. Like, do you have any There's of those? There's always experience? been beef there. I mean, it's mostly homeless skateboarders really that really that, uh, have beef there, you know, but I've, I've never had any serious problems, but uh, there was a couple of times where I had to go around and sweep up or clean some shit up just to contribute, you know? Yeah. Get, get yeah. some respect. I was going to say, did they respect that a little bit more? Was it just you or other oh, yeah, skaters in Portland? And it's it too? about, you know, you create your space and you you show that you're you're there just to have a good time, try to make it clear. But, you know, some people are just retarded sometimes, whatever. Yeah, and then, yeah. You, uh, well, you, you didn't, like, I didn't know that you just, like, you said you, like, just messed around on a skateboard or anything, but you were hitting rails on skateboards too, though. In Stanfest, you yeah. board slid a rail. Like, that's yeah. serious shit. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I, I, I'll, I'll still, like, uh, what am I trying to say? I'll still try some shit on a skateboard and on rollerblades, you know what I mean? It's still fun. <laughs> I'll go to the park every once in a while. But, yeah, you know, um, with rollerblading, it's hard to just throw the skates on and uh, not feel pain. <laughs> right, really. right. Yeah, I, I mean, know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm stiff and old at this point. I know what people mean now when they're like, well, when you're in your 30s, you're you're going to feel that in your knees. I'm like, yeah, I guess sort of quick. Shit. <laughs> it's real. Huh? Yeah. That's is, what I was doing, like, mushroom blading. Is there like an introductory story, like a friend in the neighborhood was like your first video, like watching it on TV? Like, how did you, Aaron Feinberg, who had such a career so deep in skating, what was the first, how did you get in? Oh, uh, well... Yeah, I can remember it pretty clearly. I mean, basically, one of my buddies got a pair of skates, like, before I even knew what they were. And, uh, you know, um, just tried them on. There was a minute there where I had one skate on, he had one skate on, and we're cruising around just, you know, just trying something new. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> at first, it was just like a transportation thing, like, uh, just getting around town and hopping on the Metro Rail. And uh, this is when I lived in Miami. And... Uh, 
it grew from there. Saw people doing steroids and shit, and then oh, that's, the first... I forgot you were from Miami, you're or Gainesville or something, right? That's where I was born. I grew up in Coconut Grove, Florida. It's basically Miami, just a Dade County, and okay. uh, yeah, I lived there till I was like twelve or thirteen before we moved to Portland, and uh, I moved to California shortly afterward, and then back here. Did you skate with Frankie out there? Yeah, not we were kind of on different parts of town, but definitely in the, um, you know, at what am I trying to say? Like towards the, like when I was more like 12, 13, like right before I, I moved or whatever, it was more when we were both coming up at the same time kind of thing and recognizing each other. And But uh, I'm thinking way back then, it was like the guy Ricky Martinez, basically. He was like the one OG guy that, looked up to and tried to you know compete with he yeah was Ricky first, Martinez. he was the first person to like tell me about a contest and be like there's this thing called NIST and shit like <laughs> when it first came out like he I think it was like what 95 96 or something where he was like competing with Arlo and that shit and I'm like what the fuck is this but yeah it all just skyrocketed from there you know did that NIST stuff like push you to do more park because you were doing a lot more park in like your beginning years I feel like than street skating I think most of that is just um from exposure of of what you saw or whatever from someone that um isn't with me out there you know skating street or whatever like um obviously when contests got really popular that's where a lot of the attention is so you got to be able to compete on ramps good but I think it all started from the streets for me. So, yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's a thing a lot of people from like the old school maybe have a misconception of because you definitely, when people were starting to get to know you, you were like winning all these contests and being like so deep in there in parks. So, and like you didn't start putting out the street parts of like, you know, I think VG9 and, and then Stand Fest and these things. But before that, you were known for this contest thing. So, I think a lot of people think you maybe you might have started out at park, but no, you started on the street. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, parks just brought my skating to another level and, and trying to take that route of being a pro skater, obviously you have to get good on ramps and, and I really wanted to be a good all around skater. I mean, there was a point where I wanted to be really good on vert also, but it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's I also mean, hard you, to practice on a vert too. You definitely caught some clips on vert. Yeah. I qualified for the like, top 10 and, X Games or something barely in the first year I won X Games. Fun fact, I think I made finals in Vert. Do you remember no what you way. placed? Pretty you sure. Placed? I mean, I think I placed last or whatever. <laughs> Damn, I would love I to think see it that was like, I was. They took top 10 and I was like 11th, but someone was too hurt to skate or something. Like, no oh, shit. way. You got I like, so if I remember in, it. in the finals by default, that's sick. I would love to see that run somewhere. I'm sure someone has like the ASA or whatever NIST footage that I remember it was, a, it was an indoor thing. I don't know. Everything blends together so much for me back then. Right. Were you able to blast like big old fives on the vert? Yeah. I did <laughs> it's like the scariest thing. <laughs> Anything on a vert is a but scary yeah, thing. It, it is. It is scary. And depending on the ramp or whatever, I mean, it's always, it's an odd feeling, man. Kicking out on a thing. Like it's a big gap, big distance to hit the ground. Did you yeah. just excel more in street and you focus on that more after that? Or you're just like overwork just because. Yeah. It's I mean, I guess, I guess I didn't really get too serious about it, but I, I mean, there was a point where I wanted to, to be able to hang with those guys too. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to hang with everyone on skates, basically. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm just good at one part of it or whatever, but yeah, I guess that, that mentality kind of faded and I stuck with, uh, you know, whatever I did skating street and contests whatever yeah like um i think you know there's there's a lot of legends and tales and myths about like you and like the the time where you got into the contest because like you said you like won the x games i remember there was a while where wasn't there a year where you like won every stop at the asa or something like that and like, like wasn't there some i don't know i, I also heard things like if you won <clears throat> solomon would match like so if like you win five grand, Solomon pays you five grand. So I don't know if I all these- I forgot about that. No, there, we did have a bonus like... just given the contract like that, exactly. And it was like for whatever events and we'll match this part or whatever. I can't remember exactly how it was, but but yeah. 
think uh, at that at that time Solomon was definitely taking good care of me. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You you were at an age where like, from what I heard, because this is all like, you know, like I said, legend. Like when like you were like winning these contests and like doing good. You were like 16. Is this true? I I won the X Games on my 16th birthday. On your 16th birthday. <laughs> Straight up. That's real, insane. man. It was a. It was just like landed on the birthday, actually. Were you That's just in a good mood as a little kid on your birthday, and just like I, I gotta win this shit? That was one of my my first really big contests. I mean, it went from like qualifying as pro, and then same year X Games, or was it the next year? I guess I qualified as pro in '96, probably. And uh, that felt like one of like the first serious contests. I I remember thinking I was still in a what do you call it? Oxygen skates, and I wasn't even sponsored by them. So like, <laughs> you know, super old. That's no, weird like, being like like a champion, X Games champion, and not even having a skate sponsor yet, because that's like exactly seems fundamental at the time. Yeah, it happened quick, and the industry grew so quick too, because it was kind of small at that point, but it was you know climbing so fast. Yeah, and you were right there in the forefront, like you know, winning these contests. Like you know, you're 16, you got everything ahead of you. Must have been exciting. Absolutely. I mean, it was, you know, what it's like. You're fully passionate about it. Yeah. At the time. How did it feel? You got like carried out by like Arlo and shit after, after you won, like did that. It's a, it's a, that it's a dream you? come true. You know, like I said, like I was just a, uh, just a grommet tea dog, whatever, trying to follow my dreams or whatever. And uh, at some point you realize that, that you I mean you could see the future right there in front of you and you believe in yourself and see the progress and and uh just fully engulfed in it I don't know how else to put it did you get sponsors from that afterwards oh yeah of course I mean after you win the x game so yeah do you remember like what <laughs> you got after that um well I was already sponsored by Solomon at the time but their skates weren't released yet it was oh, in shit. prototype mode so uh so yeah, I mean, supercomputer robot. I was, yeah, I was, I was, I was already like getting known and stuff at that point, I guess. But yeah, I mean, so I feel like something like that would just open so, up the door to your career. Like that was the moment that just opened everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's a huge confidence boost. I mean, yeah. it was emotional for me. It's emotional thinking back at it. I won the won it with my first run, and no one beat it with the with the whole second run and I was skating last or whatever. So I just got the free roll in my second run too, because they take the best of the run instead of averaging it, you know? So I kind of, broke down, like, kind of broke down in my run, like as much as you want to like put on a good show and, and skate, I just kind of got emotional and then Arlo came out on the course. I think the clock was still going, you know? That's yeah. real, man. Yeah, hell yeah, that's gotta be such a good feeling. Take that victory lap at a fucking yeah. 16 too. Yeah. Dream come true, really. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I've never like thought about it like that, too, especially when they had it where you already won. You're competing against people like your peers and people you looked up to. And yeah, it was more people victory. I looked up to at the time still, yeah. I yeah, mean, right? Because there's not many peers there, eh? Exactly. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's crazy, man. That's but, crazy. So you got... You were making like a lot of money at that time, definitely. Obviously winning the X Games, plus you're sponsored by Solomon right after that as 16, 17 year old. Um, well, I mean, what, like maybe with all your sponsors together, like a couple of grand. I mean, when you're 16, it feels like a lot of money or something. But oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I'm sure there was time where you were making like more money than like your parents. So that's like. But I think I won, you know, five grand and they take taxes right out of it for the X Games. But then I watch every year after it's like 20, 25, 30 grand. I'm like, damn, I need to win that shit now. Yeah. I was going to say five grand. That's small. But I guess that was like yeah. the beginning stages of the X Games. That's why. Yeah, exactly. Damn. But still, that's that's like a lot of money. Were you, were your parents like making you put that money away? Were you just like spending it on stupid shit? Like buying a lot of candy at the store? What were you doing with it? I mean... I was trying to go to school still and make it work, at, you know, high school and traveling, but it was the realization came quick that, you know, obviously getting to travel the world and get paid for it is worth a lot more than going to high school at the time. Definitely. So about halfway through sophomore year, I just 
started traveling and skating. That's when and you dropped that sophomore year. Were your folks uh, supportive of that? Or? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, my mom was just like, yeah, obviously. Do it. You're going to make more money now at this age than, of course. That's awesome. And, and I remember the experience, gave, too. Gave me the open reign to, to be an adult at a young age, basically. I remember back in the day reading something about you. You said you were getting like five grand a month from Levi's, too. Like that alone is a salary, especially in the 90s, especially when you're super young. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, the corporate, corporate money is obviously was nice for a little bit. And all you have to do is put a sticker on your helmet, right? <laughs> yeah, or like wear the pants yeah. or something like that. What other corporate sponsors did you have besides Levi's? Yeah, did you that's like Levi's? rare now. Was Levi in there? It was, that was Levi's. Yeah, I mean, it was Levi's and Gap came in around the same time. I think at first it was Gap and like, they had like Aton Kramer and was it Mike Budnick on it too? And Cesar Moore, I think. Um. But yeah, and then Levi's came like right after, and it was, it's basically just about getting their logo on ESPN, you know, and uh, yeah, for, for them, that's cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Totally. Like, I was going to ask how it was different being sponsored by a corporate sponsor like that, as opposed to a skate company, but I guess that's it. Oh, right? you don't even take it much? serious. I mean, there's no, <laughs> no passion there. You get, I, yeah, I'd go, out, go into the Levi's store and with a, nice gift certificate and just get whatever you want it's fun but it's yeah i mean obviously uh grassroots companies where you're gonna have your heart in it or whatever totally that's funny you said they didn't even take it seriously <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so there was that whole years of contests and you know you were like known as the guy who dominated them but then like you started becoming like or at least now that we know you started skating street but you started going way more into this like defining yourself as a street skater and like doing all these parts like the brain fear gone part the words yeah part. yeah well kind of that was part of just growing growing with the industry and where where the energy is at you know what i mean like once once the sport grew and had all that that corporate backing and uh, exposure to the mainstream um there was more room to make money with other little company tours and stuff and selling videos and all that and uh making just regular video parts and yeah i mean that's i mean that's the best time just being out with your friends and skating obviously mm -hmm. the whole competing thing is fun and, and glorifying but it is a lot of pressure you know yeah um on our last podcast well a couple podcasts ago we had shima on and he talked about a story where <clears throat> before you guys got on senate you were flown out to like an airport near LAX. You all had separate hotels and made the offer for you to go on Senate. And I think you said yes, but then Shima said no. And then you eventually ended up going on to Mind Game with him and Shane and everything like that. Do you know the, is there a backstory behind that? Yeah, are you talking about the trip when we all, yeah, went to the hotel in separate rooms and stuff, yeah. right. Um, I guess uh, I didn't I didn't really know what was going on with Shima at the time or even know about Mind Game or anything. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess it makes sense now that that's why he said no or whatever. I just didn't even really think about think about it when the whole team was forming and all that. But uh, yeah, that, was, that was interesting times. I almost forgot about that trip. Can you put us in that room with you? Like what do you remember like what happened, like how it all happened? I remember um, Matt Mance, I think, said uh, um, that that's what he thinks it is about us riding for Senate or whatever. So that was the only like really hints I had. I didn't, I really didn't know what was going on with it. It was a bit of a mystery. It was funny. Our, our little it's cool, together, I assume. And what, what, yeah. how did they pitch it to you when you you got there? Oh, like with like in the conference style room or whatever with a blackboard or whatever and just putting the whole concept there and using uh using the the graphics that they're going to use for the company and um laying out the whole uh what would you call it mission statement of the company and whatnot then they were like yeah it was just like ride for send it was kind of a no-brainer at the time because send is like the biggest company right and arlo is oh. involved too brooke howard smith yeah, yeah that's like yeah. a no-brainer for you yeah no-brainer and then, so how did that? So and Senate and Bravo kind of seemed to uh, 
change their their what do you call it? I don't know, business plans or whatever over the years. Like it seemed like it it was getting it was getting smaller. I'm trying to think back then, but uh yeah, at some at some point, um like I uh, really wanted to ride for mind game and those were the guys that I wanted to, you know, skate with and and uh uh, that's the one that's one sponsor that i kind of chase you know you approach yeah. shane with that or i'm guessing you approach I think shane I approached that? i think i approached dustin first and and he was kind of like standoffish about it all and uh oh no way oh yeah kind of kind of like uh we have our own kind of thing <laughs> oh, <shit. Not> exactly <laughs> <part of it. laughs> i'm like uh yeah. like, oh, that's cool man <laughs> i could hey man i don't know but uh yeah, I think um, after skating with Dustin, Dustin Moore, and Shima, and the Mind Game guys, um, I think they they got more respect from me, and certainly from Shane Coburn. And obviously, that was uh, first real good street section I kind of came out with, I guess. Yeah, no, totally. And I think they did. I know when we first watched it, and we saw how they, you know, no one knew you were on the team. The video ended. It was like one of the most epic secret parts. Like Brain Fear Gone was your name rearranged. And so they did a really good job with that. Was it hard keeping that under wraps from like other people? Were you like keeping it secret from other pros and friends? Like was it uh, yeah. how was the process? <laughs> yeah, that was that was uh interesting. Why uh friend Anton Kennedy uh uh used to skate with a lot back in the day. Um they came out with the ad for Mind Game or Brain Fear Gone, and uh, it's the silhouette of my head in the magazine, mm -hmm. but you can't tell who it is. Yeah. But he like called me right away. He's like, I see you. In the <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? Okay. That's yeah. sick. Was it tough not telling you? Because me, like, when it's really hard, like, keeping those things down, like, especially when you're working on a project that's so cool. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was exciting, though. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. There were certain people that knew beforehand, you know yeah do you remember how that idea all happened like i'm sure it was probably shane that got has all these crazy ideas but like uh do you remember him coming up to you like oh we're gonna keep this a secret for now like we want you on we're gonna have you portrayed in this way like do you remember yeah. that stuff yeah he wanted to you know have it be the last section of the video at the video premiere to, and to release it like that and uh you know at the time of the premiere of course most of the people that were there knew I was a part of mind game at that point, but not everybody. And it was kind of, uh, it was, it was put together. Well, it was a good little, that was an emotional moment for me too. Thinking back, just being in the theater, watching that all unfold. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine that right now, because I think a lot of people from this generation don't know that there were a lot of like really a bigger premieres, like they would rent out theaters. Everyone would go, it'd be like after an event or something like that. So when like the parts came up, it was just this huge energy and this complete reaction. Like that was just a high energy reaction, but I can't imagine they're like some people know and some people not know and it being a surprise and that being the video, which was yeah. such a monumental That's video totally and that part like. at the end too, being such a monumental part, people were probably going nuts. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was good times, man. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, Where was the premiere? Um, I think it was uh, one of those beach towns there. Um, yeah, I think I know which one you're talking about down there. Yeah. <laughs> My memory sucks. Like uh, <laughs> Laguna Beach area by there. I can't remember the name of the beach right by there. Yeah. You couldn't keep that a secret at all these days with like the internet and all this shit. Like there's no, no. way you'd be able to keep a, a rider Instagram, on such a high profile. A yeah. A high profile Piece rider together. on a high profile company. Yeah. Everyone would just, you know, shit would oh, leave. Oh yeah. That can I never happen again. Right. The way internet is. Yeah. Yeah. That was something unique to the time. Um, Billy, should we get into the section thing? Now? Yeah. Um, um, we obviously have a lot more we want to talk with you about, but we wanted to, since we were at this part, talking about the brain fear gone everything like that would you mind watching the part with us uh, and our viewers and maybe if you have some commentary or memories that are triggered from the part you you could speak on it all right my memory sucks but sure we're gonna yeah. refresh <laughs> your memory right now <laughs> right. 
let's see this so okay this is experimental so we'll see how this works we're about to watch yeah we should be able to hear ourselves on. over this <clears throat> okay you can see it aaron yeah the puzzle piece were you just the missing piece of the puzzle there's no audio on it though yeah no we're because we're going to talk over it oh gosh that makes sense you got the beat in your head though mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah this is the moment i'm turning to theater everyone's like ah when that scene happened yeah it was just like yeah this is definitely one of those moments that there people are like oh right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like in high school that's my high school that's your high oh, school is it yeah that's, we'll uh, a lot of this. that's Lake Oswego College out there. Uh, it's uh, mostly like uh, in, in Portland, it's mostly, I guess, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I know Anton, <laughs> my friend Anton, I brought up earlier, he'd film a lot, but yeah, um, some of it's Bryant Rutledge way back then. Were you filming this knowing that it was for the mind game video or this was before? Yeah, that's in California now, but yeah, no, totally knowing that it was for the, okay. For the mind game video. And this set like the bar kind of too. So it wasn't like was it this was words and you knew the caliber that you had to maintain. So you so some, the of these, bar here. some of these clips I'm thinking maybe I didn't know yet. I don't know. Yeah. That cab sold Ali bar. It was just one of the most epic tricks. Yeah. You, have, you have like so many of the most epics under your belt. Uh, there's there's a lot of us that do. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think my shoulder still sort of feels that one. Oh shit! Really? <laughs> yeah, you took some crazy. Yeah, it's all spells. Portland or Portland or California. That's that's the transition point, I guess. My footage was just like half and half. Oh, like the move from Portland to California? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, so th this is like when you have like. Yeah, this is when you had moved from Portland to Cali, huh? I mean, this is, I, it's, I'm just thinking, like, this is even Brain Fear gone. Some of this shit feels even older than that. But it's just yeah, like, I mean, like, Brain Fear, this, this is like 20 years old at this point, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I have memories just flashing before my head on every trick, for sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anything stand out? Like, anything that was, like, a struggle in any way that you remember? Yeah, Still but the clips are going by so quick, so. Yeah, <laughs> totally. totally. That's Huntington Beach area, I think. That was always so sick, the backslide gap into the, the bank like that. You just floated off the backslide. Yeah, it's all about make creating spots. That one, I think I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Was was this is like around the time like like you you were in like FP and hanging out with the FP guys. Yeah, right? Brian Konoski's shooting a lot of that's where basically I, I was at I don't know, since you asked me who's filming, I'm like trying to go back and think who's filming half of this shit. <laughs> Sorry. I, I actually saw some skateboarder hit that rail not long ago. Uh, a long right? one? Yeah. Jeez. That is so like, good too. Yeah, with, were you getting busted up during this part or were you staying pretty, pretty healthy? I, I would think I was pretty good through most of this shit. Just You're thinking of tough like, tricks. A lot of time span between some of these clips and my memories, which is really getting in my head right now. But yeah, so it was a, it was a long process to film for this one, huh? Yeah, this trick. Pfft. You're back talking Solomon's, let alone on a fucking ten foot drop ledge. Oh, where's that? I've been. Yeah, that's. It was like across the street from some school. We were skating like Santa Ana or something, and uh, I I kind of spotted the spot and had the idea went and shot it sick we just watched the uh, millennium the other day we do like movie nights on our youtube channel and we watched millennium and so many people skated that last that ender spot the square rail and i always thought like why would you skate that rail it looks so bad but you guys all killed it i'm trying to think of which rail you're talking about it was that last one uh backside soul transfer oh yeah gotcha it looks so yeah. not fun because <laughs> it's like yeah square no and... it is shitty it's just yeah, no, you're right. It's just trying to make make clips out of what you have in front of you, Jeez. wherever you get brought to. Yeah, that thing is. Um, yeah, I mean, you Doesn't definitely have like, and so I think that part was like the beginning of you, 
being like the hammer guy and skating, like this, the guy to do the gnarliest stuff. What, like, I feel like also in that time, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like you and Latimer were just kind of like, kind of pushing each other super duper hard. But in like, obviously you guys skated your different ways, but it felt like almost competitive in different ways, but you guys are just, I don't know. What was, what was that process like with him filming? Like, how were you guys getting the stuff done? Because you guys are doing epic tricks left and right. A lot of big egos clashing. Everyone wants to be the best. No, it's yeah, not right. it's like that. But, you know, everyone does. When you see someone do something that's next level, you want to be able to try to hang on that level, too. But, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But yes, I, actually, there, there was a, a exact time period I can think in back where where yeah, you know, this the the top guy is trying to compete to be the best, basically. Yeah. Next section led into your word section. It was I don't know if that was the next section you filmed or whatever, but it was the next mind game section or sections because there was two in there. And that's what it kind of looked like. You guys all just like hop in a car and mash around like you and Latimer, because the beautiful footage, you guys were together a lot for that. Did your did your like skating mentality change at all for that video? Cause that was like the hammerific shit. Like still like a lot of stuff in that section is like untouchable to this day. For which one? The word section. Oh yeah. Um, you came out and skated to sting man. Like, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm <laughs> kind of losing, uh, you don't remember the sections? <laughs> I just on the exact question. <laughs> you have to repeat it all again. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like the, the word section like that was, I in my mind, that was always like one of the hardest sections in skating history ever. And that seemed like where you guys were all pushing yourselves the, the hardest. And you guys were always, like yeah. you see in the B-roll footage, you guys were head, like hopping out of Dustin's car together and shit. Um, do you remember anything, uh, anything specific about skating with Dustin and whoever else during that time? I mean, just that that Dustin was, you know, super next level and inspirational person to skate with. I mean, he was one of my favorites, and um, it's really, it, but yeah, I mean, thinking back at that time, that that I feel the same way. It was like everyone, or myself, and a lot of people were uh, pushing progression hard, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we were skating at our best. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I was. I feel like was that like a conscious effort to separate from skateboarding, or like a conscious effort to like get blading to have respect, or what there was, was a tr a transition there of of uh, the sport kind of um, um, creating its own boundaries of what's acceptable and cool or whatever, you know, like. And there was a, there's a handful or, you know, skaters that are inspirational and create what's acceptable and cool or whatever within the sport. And, you know, skateboarding, you watch that sport, the way it's grown from the early days or whatever, it's, it's a, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of changes that go on through the sport and just people that mold the sport, you know? Totally. Like I was, I was one of those people that was, was able to grow with the sport and help mold it in my own ways and along with many others. Totally. Absolutely. No question about it. Mm -hmm. You did um, a lot of crazy, like I was saying before, a lot of the craziest shit. I'm curious to know what you think the craziest trick you've ever done was. Um, one of them that stands out, I think is like one of the last, tricks maybe it was one of the word sections um just doing like a soul grind over you know a stair set the from the second one <laughs> it's just maxing out for me because i clipped on it a bunch of times and it kept you know bouncing off the ground trying to land on that rough pavement and uh you know you that's one the rail of a bunch of times that, yeah and that's i mean but <laughs> but didn't flip or anything just clacked it you know and did running mans and stuff in the damn air Holy shit. And, uh, that's just one of those clips that I was either going to land or hurt myself pretty bad or something. Yeah. When you did clear it, it was just like by a hair. A hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Pushing that was like boundaries. everything on the line right there. It's so sick. I think that's why that trick crosses crosses the line. There. That that one's really sick. Yeah, I like, that I like was at a time that where it was it was still considered a hard trick to jump over a second rail or whatever. Yeah. What's not hard anymore? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, a lot of the skating is. I mean, in terms of like big solid stunts or whatever, not much has changed that that much, but. Um, you know, there's certain people out there still pushing the sport to the next level. Totally. I'm happy you said that the Soul 180 over was like the trick that stands out. Cause when I think about it too, that is the trick also that stands out. And I only thought it took two tries cause there's the fish angle and the long shot, but to find out that it took numerous tries, like that's fucking insane. What yeah, about the, hurting, uh, hurting myself on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about like, I think it's the same video. You do the fish ray on the roof. You roll fakie and 360 off the second roof. Yeah. Like, was that easy for you or what? Like, I can't imagine that taking too many tries. That was landing on nice, flat, smooth concrete. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it wasn't, that one wasn't all that bad, but it is, it is lofty and a big solid drop or whatever. But I think that one I was, I was kind of coasting. I landed at like second or third try or something. But you yeah. don't get many tries on that. Like illusion off a roof 360, like with shingles and shit. Like you don't know how that shit's going to roll. Yeah, and I'd say that that shot is more of a, the cool scenery kind of clip that that stands out, but wasn't like the craziest stun or nothing. I mean, it still was cool or whatever, but it made for like a a good picture and a good shot. Yeah, the photo is sick of you fish braining it because it's like the vertical. You see the whole thing in the shot. Yeah, it looks neat, but the fish brain's only like a foot long or something, you know. That doesn't matter on that because <laughs> it's not low either. It's like a. Like, yeah, it was it like waist high. Or yeah, it looks big, you know. Uh, can I ask you about? There was a photo of you for a USD ad, I think it was, where you do a rough fish on El Toro, and yeah. it, was, it was like questionable for so many people in the industry because no one saw the actual clip of it, so no one knew if you actually did it. Do you like? Did anything happen with the clip of that? Like, was it done? Was it not done? No comment, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just joking. Someone asked me that at the uh, uh, what do you what do you call that? Blading cup. Blading cup. Yeah. And uh, yeah, basically, I never really got it solid. I just kept clipping like my back wheel on the last stair, or you know, coming off slightly early, or um, just like barely nicking down the toe onto a macchio and back up. Or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So how did um, it make it to the yeah. ad? Like, did that bother you at all that it was in the ad? Or like, was that your idea or someone else's idea? No, I, I was questioning it all along, kind of the, the whole process of it turning into the photo. But I think BK shot it. It was just like, I mean, I didn't have a say, like, if it's going on the magazine or yeah. whatever. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Made, like for, made, made for a good picture. But yeah, I never really got it solid on there. I mean. I was hitting it and rolling out of it and but not to I, like maybe it. I maybe I even did clear the last stair and like put a knee down with one foot, but it's sloppy, you know, never mm -hmm. never got it clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh definitely made an interesting photo and good controversy for like years afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <very good. laughs> so that that was made it legendary enough. You know what's crazy? Like I I must have tricked myself into thinking I saw that clip because I was like, no, he's he landed that. I think I've seen the clip. Had a dream about it. I guess I tricked myself into that. <laughs> Even mine's I, nuts. I saw a meme like a few years ago. It was like, it was the classic meme of like the above shot of the couple sleeping in bed and the, the couple's fighting and the woman's like, is a bubble above her head. It's like, he's probably thinking about other women and the guy's over so and you see him like, playing. did Feinberg really land that rough fish on El Toro? <laughs> like that's <laughs> like, like, yeah. that was so fucking funny. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the, the rumors all slowly sprouted out of it because it wasn't legit you know yeah well, yeah yeah whoever was there and myself and like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so just spread like that you, st you started talking about like blading cup too that you were at blading cup and that was your first time back on the scene in yeah, it was years A lot of how, and you won the veterans cup too which is fucking crazy how was that coming back that was so cool. Just just seeing, you know, a lot of people that you haven't seen in 10, 15 years. Yeah. I mean, time goes by quick and there's a lot of memories to be had. And then something I'd like to go to every year as long as I have it. That was a good time. It was it was funny when I when I saw you there 
and you ended up winning and i was like hey man you've been skating and i think you said like you hadn't put them on for for years not only have i not skated for a year or two or thrown them on for that long it, it was uh about a week or two of pain afterward you know oh shit yeah <laughs> no way yeah I was trying to, trying to, I mean, it was, it was fun. You have all the energy out there, all the people or whatever, adrenaline. And uh, so it was a great time skating, but I was quickly reminded by how much it hurt for the next week or two. <laughs> That's crazy though, that you haven't put, you didn't put them on for a year or two and you went out and, and you won that man. Yeah. I mean, I'm not in the worst physical shape. I could throw on my skates and skate, do tricks and shit, but you know, we're, where I am mentally with it, obviously I'm able to do a lot more than my body will let me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a weird feeling trying to, trying to skate and, and feel those restrictions of your body, not quite wanting to bend or be quite as forgiving, you know? No, I, to I totally know like that struggle from where you are mentally when you get older with what you've done on skates versus like I've what you've progressed your mentally. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm better than I was back then. I think I'm smarter, but uh no my body's not gonna let me go there <laughs> totally <laughs> it might have felt like uncomfortable for you maybe not skating for a few years but it didn't look it's everyone else like you were just straight up like fucking shit up like doing crazy shit like going up the box like sweaty three out or whatever but it didn't look like it felt unnatural at all or uncomfortable right totally dead <laughs> <laughs> you, pl you pulled it off well <laughs> barely <laughs> did you find remember no, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I remember even before that like you know um because there was a bit like after I think probably bang or like you kind of started fading fading away from the, this spotlight of the scene and I think you maybe moved back up to Portland right um sorry you lost me this light's blinding me hold on yeah <laughs> Damn, we need cool backgrounds 92 in the help. chat I know it's a little better or is it it looks blurry? the same <laughs> no it looks the same no, i moved the lamp over a few feet all right okay so yeah like after bang uh things started like you know dying down you ended up moving back from california back up to um back to portland right absolutely um yeah things started started dying down it was just a slow slow progression um of transitioning from being a pro skater back into the real world and uh it's a tough transition, especially with like someone who's had some of the experiences you've had. Yeah, I mean, it isn't. It, it was a real, real slow transition, you know. Yeah, I was, I was comfortable. Um, you know, you got comfortable with uh, the money part of it or whatever. Um, so that was a little weird, kind of just dwindling to like, what do I do next, or what am I passionate about? Mm -hmm. But uh, at some point there's different growths you need to go through in life that aren't about skating and shit too. You know what I mean? So I've, it's been, it's been nice growing up as a person and not just going with the jumping on the train of whatever's going on and not actually thinking about shit half as much. I don't know. What yeah. say. When no, I was like skating, time, so much time goes by so quick and so many things. I mean, you don't really, you, you forget about the simple things that you enjoy too in life, you know? Totally. So like you had a bit there where you were like rediscovering that again. Yeah. I mean, figure, I mean, figuring out what you want to do, it's, it is kind of depressing going from, from the light, the spotlight to, you know, just regular shit all the time. But, uh, um, doing anything new is always exciting for me, learning anything new, you know what I mean? So, um, as much as that shit was fun and exciting, glorifying being a pro skater all that time, you're, it's also redundant, you know. Totally. There's not much growth in it after a certain point. Ex exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the flame, the flame sort of dissipates after a while with anything. What did you fill that void with after you got done skating? What's that? What did you fill that void with after you got done skating? Like, was the... the like anything else, like a new hobby you were taking up or anything like that? Um, just uh, not really. I mean, I went to community college for a couple of years, but for nothing exact. I mean, 
I feel like I have an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset. So I went for a business degree and just never transferred to university to finish it. But uh, um, really, I just I want to I want to work for myself at some point and and uh, be passionate about what I do. I enjoy. Um, I've enjoyed all the shit I've done working for other people the last 10, 15 years, or I guess like 10 years since I've had a regular job. But, you know, at the end of the day, I daydream about, you know, trading my own shit and hiring my own employees. That's the That's way, the, man. It's the American dream right there. <laughs> That's um, the goal. After you- if not, well, you're a 30% slave. Remember that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so it's, it's better to work for yourself. That's for sure. Um, and then I remember like after this break, you had this comeback section with like Sean Cohen and oh. <laughs> everyone, everyone was like, what? First of all, there were so many people were so stoked. Cause you had like some, obviously some serious moves in there. People were like, Whoa, like Aaron's coming back all this. But then like, also, cause like, I think because you filmed it with Sean, it didn't come out in the, in, like immediately, or it's got sat on for too long. It was just this, this <clears> crazy <throat> thing. So do you want, do you want to talk about? What caused you to, or inspired you to come back and film a part, or what was going on with you? Um, just, just Sean trying to create something, and yeah, he's an interesting fella. I like Sean. I like hanging out with him, though. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think I was, I was ever really trying to do much of a section, but in his mind, he's like, dude, you could do a lot of cool stuff. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But He's yeah, good at convincing of, people and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. There wasn't, there was, I can't even really remember much from that part or whatever. But yeah, I was just trying to get back into skating a little bit at the time. And I, I, I will come out and do a little push here and there and, and try to skate with people if, uh, if the energy is there. I could still, uh, I could still maintain a little bit on skates, obviously, but it's just, it's just not the same, the same passion like it was. And, yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's I mean, you you kinda have to like you said before, listen to your body and be limited. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't take like a video part seriously or anything at this point. It's more just like for fun, you know. Yeah. Also you've set the bar at such a ridiculously high point. You gotta battle with your own self and it's like good luck with that. Yeah, my body's still healing, man. I'm I'm really grateful to be in one in one piece at this age though or whatever, walking on two feet, you know. Looking at some of the things you did, sure. yeah, I think so, you are. <laughs> yeah. All right, just come back and win a contest every year. That's not, no biggie, blading cup. <laughs> oh, that was the the elderly blading the cup. The veterans. Right. <laughs> Let's make that clear. I remember yeah. it was so funny though, when you, uh, when they announced that you won at the bar or whatever that night, you just, like took the award, I guess, and you, you walked away and somebody was like, say something speech or whatever. And you said like, I don't think I deserve this, but yeah, thank you all. Well, I was, there. Well, I was <laughs> watching other people if I can do harder tricks than I was or whatever. Um, I wasn't really thinking about it as a contest at all anyways, but in hindsight, I felt like it was more of like a thank you for coming kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. I think it was well-deserved on every aspect. Right on, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, we have 291 people watching right now. Um, I think we're going to ask people to start putting forth some questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, you know, I watched like, the, uh, the Aragon one earlier. It's my first time even hearing about this Jump Street thing, but I was like, let's see what this even is. <laughs> oh, yeah? So, we, that we was a little more intimidating. One. We did the Shima one a while ago. It was pretty good. And yeah, after we did that, he mentioned to you on a couple of things. So we're like, oh, we got to get Aaron on for sure. Well, obviously, uh, we on anyway. <laughs> But um, uh, we have a few super chats here, and I guess we'll prioritize if any of them have questions too. Um, one of them was I don't even know how accurate this is. Ryan uh, Kelly Ryan Lake want to know what was the story around you hanging out with Eminem? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I did too. Um, so, <laughs> um, Mike the Solomon um, team manager, somewhere or another, knew. Eminem's team manager, and we're there for the San Francisco X Games, and um, um, so he lined it up so we could meet up. We're supposed to meet at like some some event or bar or something, but he ended up just meeting us at the bar in the hotel lobby, and uh, 
we just hung out, had a couple shots, and chatted it up for a little bit. Drank some Bacardi with Eminem. And uh, I was trying to record him with the camera, and I'm filming him from, like, the nose up. I don't normally hold a video camera. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, I was trying to do a little interview with him or whatever. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, that was that was neat. Uh, it was, what were you filming him for? Just to have it? like? Well, I guess we always had a video camera around or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, it's Eminem. So I don't know. Yeah. We're all sitting there talking or whatever. I ended up for a minute just being like me sitting at the table with Eminem. And um, I asked him if you mind if I did a little film the interview or whatever. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I was drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least buzz. And uh, um yeah, I can't even really remember what we talked about, but I think I told him, I was trying to kind of get into his head for a second. I said, like, um, so we both just kind of travel around and, and party. I feel like we live like a similar lifestyle. He laughed and he was like, you think you live a, a similar lifestyle to me or something? I was like, <laughs> fucking yeah, what do you, you know, like, what do you do that's, that's, that's that special or whatever? I don't know. Oh, shit. And that's- uh, it, was, it was just funny, but... Um, did he respect I think you also you told, told him? him. I think you also told him like you weren't like crazy about his music and like you listened to the. Oh beat. yeah, because I wasn't. I mean, I thought I wasn't that crazy about it, but he's used to like fans trying to like interview us, and I'm just like, yeah, I've heard of you, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's real. I don't know. That's real. Tell him and I'm like, yeah, I like the Beatles though. You're you're okay, <laughs> but I like the Beatles. That's it. <laughs> yeah, the Beatles were the first band that got me into into listening to music and not just hearing it. That's and you got sick, to skate man. to the Beatles too. I am the walrus. Yeah. Yeah, that was epic. Billy, you want to grab a, a question? Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, Andrea says, who are your favorite bladers of the past and contemporary? Um, so I don't really follow enough to really drop any any new names or whatever, but the, the legends in my mind that I've looked up to. I mean, it's at different points in skating or whatever, it's different people. I guess to, to go way back, um, um, TJ Weber was the first person that I saw, um, you know, with really good style that made skating look really cool. And uh, from there, it was more like Randy Spicer and Champion Bomb Stimler, Corey Nelson, um, obviously Arlo too, and uh, you know from the start. And uh, there's just been so many good skaters. I mean, um, but those guys have had like the definitely the big impacts on you in the in the beginning. Right? Yeah, the the immediate names that that pop in my head. I mean, but yeah, you had an inspiration from all over the place. I mean, even Mike Budnick, he's from Florida, and when I was really young, skating, um, whatever skate park there was back then, whatever, um, running into him and just giving me that nudge of like, hey man, you you know, you can be one of the best pros or he told me, you know, you can be a professional vert skater if you want to. And seeing him doing it at the time, basically, and being told that, I mean, little things like that along your career go a long way. Totally. Hmm. Damn, you wouldn't, I don't think a lot of people would have made that connection between you and Mike Budnick, but that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Harith Hassan asks, how were you so confident? It seems like you didn't care what others thought of you. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. It's the personality thing, I guess. Um, and and just the development of believing in yourself. I mean, going when I was, you know, going from a young age, you go back like two years before I was that confident or whatever I wasn't it's just um I don't know some of it is is just uh I can't find the right words I feel like that comes with you sometimes like I'm about to say a word and I want to stop and like thinking oh I don't want to say that or come off like (laughs) this I don't know um 
<laughs> so I feel like confidence like comes with you. Like you just are a confident person. You are a confident person. I don't know if that's something you develop as uh, just like, as your personality. Right, but I'm thinking some of it is, I mean, that's, that's, or I guess, I guess I was getting confused too with it. Um, yeah, I mean, part of it's just the, the person you are and, and part of it is uh, growing as a person too though. I mean, cause I was a shy little kid at one point and I've been less and less of that as I've gotten older, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's just living life. Mm -hmm. Um, holding your ground, what you believe in. I mean, if you, if you have something to stand on that you believe in, then it's not easy for people to break it down or make you feel vulnerable, you know? Totally. And yeah, I think, yeah, probably like with confidence probably comes with the proficiency and ability too. You know, you keep practicing, you get better and better and better. You are this good, you're this confident and you're just probably part of that grows the better you get, I think too. Yeah. And I know some of me, that's for sure. Yeah. And then you do something else and you start over from scratch. Always got to be humble though. And you know, the whole remember where you came from thing. We all, we're all just people. That's for sure. Um, 17 BKS and uh, Anton Ryling said, do you have a Shane Scour touring memory? And can you tell us about your trip to South Africa and why you and Shane had to cut the trip short? Oh yeah, that's a good story. So um, basically there was a, a girl that I hooked up with there that had a boyfriend that showed up with some sort of spiked bat or something looking for me. Oh, shit. So <laughs> it, it got kind of weird quick, but that's kind of the aftermath of the story because that was after I, we were already banned from the park from coming back to the contest the next day, but that's when he had showed up. So it was kind Why of- Why did you guys get day. banned? That's where I'm going with it. But yeah, it was kind of okay. a blessing that that shit happened. But we got banned because we got caught with a whole bunch of pot in the security trailer or whatever, like pound of weed just piled up on the table and we we're just being a little bit too openly about it all. Yeah. And it was in like a- the event was in the parking lot of a place that's kind of like a, you know, Disney World, Universal Studios type place out here, but in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they have their own security and shit walking around and seeing what's going on. And uh, yeah, they, they tried to like, you know, drag us into the security thing of the actual park thing and um, say we're going to jail and all of this shit. And it was a bit of a joke, but the guy that coordinated the event basically picked us up in a fancy car and drove us back to the hotel. But yeah, that's how that went down. <laughs> that was a, that was a cool little contest though. Um, the preliminaries were fun and it was fun skating the shit. It was just one of those things, I guess. And do you have any, oh, yeah, that's, sorry, go ahead. No, any of that got us any, any wild like stories uh, with Shane, uh, in regard to that uh -oh. one um just just good times good memories traveling south africa was awesome his mom worked for uh, american airlines shit she probably still does but i doubt it but um we flew a uh, first class upgraded because uh the flight attendant status that pull that she had or whatever and first class on uh flight to South Africa is pretty next level. It's like it's totally you know, one, one seat per row or like it was just uh, each seat goes back into a full bed and like you're getting served. By no like, way. Food and wine on the like, Yeah, free people, people are probably so pissing seeing like a couple little punk looking kids yeah. going to first totally. class. <laughs> but uh, you weren't yeah, wild or rowdy. I haven't talked to Scour in a long, long time, but yeah, we had we had some some really good times. It's cool where um den zens asks how was it leaving solomon for usd oh that's yeah that was uh also kind of like i i kind of went after usd i guess kind of like i did with my game like this is what i where mm -hmm. i want to go with my skating career or whatever right now the people i want to skate with companies i want to support basically um solomon they treated us really good at the beginning and they they were always 
cool to work with, but like any corporation, um, making money at the end of the day for them is what's in, important to them. And uh, mm -hmm. if they want to give me a pay cut and I can make almost as much money for that riding for a company that I actually want to support or feel more connected to, then, you know, that's, that's the way that went basically. Yeah. So you, it was like a mix of like pay cut plus you just really wanted to ride for USD at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's it was just basically those are the the guys I want to hang out and skate with more. It feels closer connected to and watching Solomon sort of, you know, let people go like that. There's no no real um, no real connection to it or as much as with a smaller company where you could actually hang out with the owner like, mm -hmm. you know. Matthias with USD, whereas I don't even know who on Solomon. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, can I ask what uh, which one of your sponsors was like most impactful or helped you the most in your skating career? Because you had some of like the highest ranking sponsors you could have: Solomon, uh, Mind Game, USD, Senate. Like, is there one that stands out that helped you out the most? You felt? I guess Mind Game. Like I said, that's the one company that I I kind of one sponsor I kind of chased after because I wanted to be a part of that group and I wanted to basically um <clears throat> it's just the guys that i respected the most in skating and wanted to be like basically mm -hmm. totally I figure that would be one um so bobby dixon really wants me to ask you about ninos, ninos oh Combombas. bobby dixon ninos come bombas by bryant relage <laughs> that was a cool i mean that's 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 the original shit i mean if you don't have your hands on it, I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but you could see Ruben looking really scrawny skating and me looking really funny with Jinko skating. <laughs> but yeah, Brian Rutledge makes cool edits. He's actually in some uh, some band now where he's traveling and successful with music. So That's really cool. And he's always been into editing and shit like that and good at skating. What, what what was the birth of Nino's Kanbama? So there any? Cool it's just him editing. He's the one friend of ours that would actually try to make a video or whatever. Um, none of us knew how to edit shit or whatever. And he was he made started making skating clips. And yeah, there's that one clip that stands out where uh, he does a voiceover of Vanilla Ice on an airplane, and he goes Nino's Kanbama or whatever, like over. It looks like. Uh, Vanilla Ice is saying it or whatever, but it's just a, uh, yeah, it's just a funny, really, really old movie. I'm sure uh, Bobby Dixon's probably got a clip in there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Bobby, if if, if, uh, if it's up there and you know about it, put a link in the in the comments so people could check it out when they're done with this. Uh, you mentioned also before you were skating with Ruben a lot, like your brother, younger brother. Um, what was that like? How was it skating with him growing up, or when you started blowing up? What happened with him? Um, I guess when I moved to California to skate, I mean, obviously not, didn't skate with him as much or see and hang out with the same skaters as much, you know what I mean? But Ruben in his own way was a really good, creative, technical skater, you know, and, uh, he, um, now he does really good artwork all over the city and um he's doing good i don't know where i'm going with it <laughs> it was uh it was cool seeing like all these brothers skating like you you two were some of them too and it was like uh you guys skated the same also you guys both all the early footage you guys both had helmets on in the big pants oh yeah like in the hoax and uh i don't know probably suitable material or something like that and uh, i always like to hear about these relationships with people skating with their brothers and how it turns out, I know Louis's brother skated too, and yeah, you know Louis kind of takes the spotlight off of his brother Steve, and it was kind of like that with you and Ruben. But yeah. I don't know if he tried to like do something and like be pro, like how you were in any way. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it. The, what am I trying to say? I mean, I'm sure there's a a time where he was kind of annoyed with me being in the spotlight all the time, or people asking about me, and well, I don't know. But uh, I can see that being annoying, you know, if you're a little brother. Yeah, of course. And yeah. um, maybe feeling a little deserted. I, you know, kind of left uh, California to just 
do my own thing after hanging out with him for a lot of our younger ages, you know. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's family stuff. It's kind of whatever. Right, right. Um, let me ask you about this. Um, Ride Like Aaron, how did that come to be? Mm-hmm. And did you make any money off that? No, I'm glad you asked me that question. Nice. <laughs> that thing's <laughs> annoying. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's most, it was Mo and Jerry that approached me about it and, and kind of a, a deceptive manner of like, hey, we're doing this. We're already doing one with Rawlinson and Rivera and, you know, Randy Spicer and whoever else dropping names. I'm like, yeah, sounds cool. Let's do it, you know? And there's like a contract of like, if we sell this much, you get this amount or whatever. I'm like, all right. So it turns out like none of those other guys are even doing the shit with them. And um, like year after the shit's like going on, I'm like, you know, where's the money from the contract or whatever. And most how much, how much were you projected to get? Nothing much. It was like they owed nothing me like much. five grand or something at the end of it. I, it was just the royalties or whatever, but it was just the way it was handled it was it's I guess it boils down to the guy Jerry or whatever. Um because I think Mo is a pretty cool guy, and I don't think he was trying to really screw me on it or be deceptive. I don't know. I've tried to talk to him about it since then. No, uh, and uh, when I ran into him, it was like they were doing a roller rink thing in Portland like five years ago or something. I guess he's big on this thing called roller derby or something. Mm-hmm. Where a bunch of people bump into each other on the track with roller skates. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> but. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I ever really got to talk to Jerry about it. He just avoided me and uh, just one of those things. Just so you got stiffed? Poor character. Yeah, just poor character on Jerry's part. I mean, we never were really buddies or whatever, but when he came out to film it, he took out all me and my friends to like Denny's, like, oh yeah, we're <laughs> buying you guys all food and hanging out. This is fun and it's going to be cool. And then afterwards, it was kind of like, oh yeah. That money's gone or something. Basically. Did you make a dollar on her? That's right. crazy. Yeah, and it's kind of an embarrassing, stupid instructional video to not make anything off of it. Well, it's based off of you. I mean, just put together you. shitty, embarrassing in the way that it was, it, it was, uh, you know, just put together crappy. Did no one else do their videos too? Like, because they didn't want to? Do you even know that? Like, the reason you said other people got asked to do videos like that? I really too? don't know. I just felt like it was deceptive the way they approached it. And and um, it was, I do feel like it was just Jerry, um, who I don't really know that well. But like I said, I don't really want to badmouth um, Mo Sanders over it. But uh, yeah, it just, it just seemed lame like that. Yeah, that's, wow, that's shocking, actually. Um, we're not going to be able to get to all of these questions. Yeah, they're coming in hot. We're probably going to be able to only get to one or two more. Um, Eric Cohen or- wants wants to know if you have. Oh, sorry, Austin, I guess it was no. That, I, I was going the same way you were, so go cool. for it. Yeah, um, we got a couple people asking Eric Cohen being one. If you have any crazy stories from the USD tour, um, like the USD tour I'm video, thinking of like my, Michael Keeney and RVs and and just just drunkenness and farting <laughs> and i don't know I don't, no, no real specific story yeah right now do you have like a specific like a favorite tour the that you've been on seemed fun. <laughs> um i know i had a, a good time on that uh the tour with um that dave Payne did. what was it called sunshine sunshine tour I have memories on that it was fun that's his favorite tour too it's it's just um it's just fun you know going going out with a bunch of friends and traveling i don't know really at the end of the day being a pro skater the best part about it is getting to travel um all expenses paid you know Mm -hmm. oh having the ability to to i mean it's it's getting paid to do something you enjoy is awesome but getting paid to to travel to do something you enjoy that's way next level. Traveling is way cooler than any of uh, any other any other activity. Yeah, and and Austin, I know it's uh, we're supposed to go back, but I got no, go, go. th- this just triggered a memory. The FOR two, you're in Hawaii. It's your birthday, or I think it's your birthday. You got everyone down there on mopeds, 
and you're riding around like what, what was, like, yeah yeah i heard like solomon sent like you and like 10 of your friends to go to Hawaii. Like, yeah what's the story was, behind that right about that too yeah that was cool i mean they they hooked that up it was literally just um gave me that opportunity i guess as a thank you or whatever just being cool i don't know how it was really planned or organized but they basically gave me the all expense trip paid to take 10 of my homies and um and just have a good time in Hawaii. All expenses paid, basically. Get your your mopeds, your stocked condos on the beach, and have a blast. No and way. Was, what a perk. Yeah, really fun. That, was, that, that looks now. really, really cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This might be getting Mike, a little... Michael Keeney has, you know, knows how to have a good time out there and show us around and um yeah, at one point we bought some fake pot, which wasn't cool, but <laughs> it was a great trip. Was that the only thing that Solomon did for you like that, or they did stuff like that for you constantly? No, it was that was the only kind of thing. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. And I don't even know if it was for a, a birthday. Maybe it was a birthday thing. Um, yeah, I just I just remember uh, just coasting the those mopeds around full speed and and uh having a stocked liquor cabinet and just good times man yeah that's awesome sounds about right for like mid-20s you know just doing whatever the fuck you want to do yeah i mean partying and doing whatever you want at a young age it's it's not might not be the healthiest thing but we all have to go through that phase mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it Definitely. sure is fun <laughs> <laughs> while it lasts it's fun uh i don't know if this might be too personal you could answer this or not answer this if you want a lot of people were asking in the chat how much money you made in your the most uh paid year for you as a skater oh i guess i mean i was making over 100 grand a year for like four years um I think at one point I had like a few hundred grand like in the bank and that that's about that was my max geez a few it's hundred a, in the bank that's nuts yes. I mean I yeah I don't know but that's cool yeah my biggest regret though with all that is not buying a house when I had money you know like I mm -hmm. said like it, it was a real slow transition because I had money I was doing pretty good from skating so it wasn't like boom you're hit with reality it's like takes you a couple of years to realize it doesn't take that that long to spend a couple hundred grand <laughs> yeah you can go quick oh yeah 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 uh, um damn that's crazy that actually shocked me that one then. yeah i didn't expect that much either <laughs> where do you um where do you see like the future do you like think about if there is a future blading left do you do you have instagram by the way i i downloaded it i just don't go on it yeah. that's good it's probably healthy but i don't know if you know but like josh petty has been like coming back and showing interest yeah. and he's starting a podcast with joe navron right and on. like jeff frederick has been like posting about blading again it's like this like kind of since like the whole lockdown um i'm just curious like you know what you think the future because you've been through so many different levels of blading you know you've seen some, some successful years you've seen like some like hopeless years now we're kind of in this purgatory, but I wonder right. if you ever think of what it could be, like what it may be, what it would be 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. Is there a future? Is it dead? What do you think? After going to that event, um, the blading cup thing, I got a rush of energy of like, yeah, there's, there's energy in the air. Uh, you could see, you could see stuff going on on that lower level that I wasn't exposed to or didn't really know was actually going on because it did kind of feel like the sports really died out, you know, but like yeah. going to the skate park the other day over here and seeing like 10 different guys on rollerblades is like, all right, maybe, maybe there's something there. So, yeah, I mean, something that got that big and died or not died, but, you know, hit the wall pretty hard. Um, mm. It's not just going to disappear forever. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. going to rollerblading is going to make a, going to make a pushback and it's going to be guys like us doing podcasts and, supporting it one way or another and uh um you know being able to have those people in a new industry makes the makes it that much more powerful you know than than just being the 
skater guys not knowing what's going on with everything you know totally everyone's getting smarter with it now and now everything like skater Roan, whether it's podcasts or all these other companies too which is like john doing them and now everyone's finally getting yeah and now when new, mature enough and now when new people see rollerblading um they don't see it as as uh you know what is that is somewhere implanted in the back of their head of that's something that exists and you don't look at it as or in general people aren't going to be so quick to 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 smash it down when the level and the imagery of the sport um, speaks for itself, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a time when rollerblading when was, was awkward, you know what I mean? Like when it's was in its really younger uh, years, it was just developing. Like I said, there's the people that sort of helped the sport grow and molded it. And it's just, um, it's, it's not some, some, uh, <clears throat> it's not some niche little thing anymore. I mean, it is, but when uh, people won't look at it the same way, the, the more, when it does make a comeback, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna look cooler than when it made its first push in the past. Mm -hmm. Totally. I definitely agree with stand that. up to scrutiny a bit, a bit more <clears throat> resilient. Yeah, we had a, like I said before, we had, we host movie nights on this channel too. And the other week we watched Hoax 2 and that was like 95, I think. And it was like how you said the skating was like almost like embarrassing, kind of like looking back at it now, like people didn't really know what they were doing. The falls were crazy. People didn't know like kind of what they were doing, but then you yeah. watched like, you watched like Elements or something, which is like three years later and the skating the skill level, everything jumped so much so fast. And mm -hmm. I think there's all these different like eras of skating and now we're in like the refine, we're done with like the refining era and everybody right. the stunts and the hammers now. And now like everybody, like we're back to the maturity era. Yeah. Where, there's what's accepted and what, what isn't, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. Rollerblading nowadays, there's a lot of, there's, I mean, when, from what I see, there's a lot of guys making rollerblading look really cool. Yeah. Totally. 100% definitely agree with that. You said that you also, you say that you go to the skate park, it's like 10 people there, which I think is a, a lot of people to run into at the skate park. But have you been skating much since Bleeding Cup? Like, did that spark anything for you? No, I just went there to skateboard around with a friend. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I don't I don't picture myself getting too serious about skating. Um, it's like reoccurring injuries too, you know? It's like anytime... I fall a certain way. It just reminds you of, of uh, remind the pain. You know, it just reminds you of uh, why we're not trying to. I mean, it's nothing new. Is my point. Like you gotta, you gotta stay all around and in good shape. And if anything, I feel like rollerblading just hurts my boy, my body more than help it. Help more than helps it. Mm. Doing anything new uh, improves it. You know yeah that like kind of reminds you of like why you were falling out of it all those injuries well there's certain muscles stopped? that you pull over and over again and the stuff that takes a long time to heal and there's stuff that i've kind of healed from and going to fall the same way and feel that that shit that's healed hurting itself again is not a good feeling it's like no i don't want to go back there yeah that's well, definitely not something we miss. One of our uh, viewers, Flowey's Corner, said, please tell Aaron that even when he's not actively skating, personalities like him still involved are super important and inspirational. And I agree. Yeah, it's kind of like what we were talking about with uh, where, we're, where we are in the industry now and how we can be inspirational for other people and, and create, you know, um, good content for people to see. Totally. Well, uh, Aaron, I want to say uh, I appreciate your time. Austin, I don't want to cut you off. Um, you, yeah, go. I, yeah, like, I just want to appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think Austin might have something to say, but also if you have anything to impart on the Blade community, any wisdom, any thoughts? Um, you got to hit me with that kind of question in advance, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take it in essay form next week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just have you know it's all about having a good time and all the all the skaters coming up skating now or whatever um look you know look back to 
the history of where it all started from. Because there's a lot of kids now that they they don't even know about ro what rollerblading was. 15, 20 years ago, or however long we've been doing this shit. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, that's all. 15, 20 years ago isn't even like the history, history part of it. I feel like the 90s is where you go. And that's when you think about it now, it's over 20 years ago, which is insane. Yeah, to it's think hard about. for me to imagine. I was like, or however long. Far gone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for taking the time to do this. I know you don't do this too often, but it was. No, great. I don't really. It's not, not the most enjoyable thing to interview on the spot or whatever, but I want to feel like, uh, um, like I could contribute in some way and support whatever you guys are doing and oh i appreciate yeah, that it was a good time we appreciate that and i'm sure Thanks, everyone hope, is so appreciative I hope, it wasn't of you. Too, I hope it wasn't too painful for you dude. <laughs> no not, not at all i i i just meant like you know no, you got no, to nervous if you're like i don't know what the hell we're doing and talking about I'm like all right let me get my coffee ready and but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah no it was good catching up with you guys good talking to you fish oh yeah, yeah. it's good talking to you aaron and uh hope we uh hope to see you at the next play cup and to share a beer and to laugh with you soon Mm -hmm. right on man you guys have a good one for sure you too Aaron. thanks Take everyone care. watching thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one peace thanks for joining everyone peace later on